Yo! That was exciting. That was an exciting intro. What's going on, guys? Um, we're doing another live stream from the office. Uh, because work just never stops. What's going on? Let's see who shows up. And everyone was like, where's the live stream? Where's the live stream? Well, it's here. It's here. Chi-Town, California in the building. Let me uh, turn on all the chats. Uh, SoCal Watch Reviews, Jordan Snyder, Milcom, the moderator. Milcom, you're probably going to be working overtime uh, because I've been getting a uncharacteristically high amount of uh, troll activity. But I love it because uh, that's I do read the comments and it makes me chuckle because a lot of them are pretty clever. Enric, James K., Certified T3Bot and moderator. Beep boop. Mr. Shinobi Sakari, Certified T3Bot. Everyone's here. Jeremy Walker. Um, Milcom moderator says he needs to leave the house in an hour. All right. Well, I'm sure it will be good. Uh, Robert from Saratoga Springs. What's going on, man? You ever eat at the uh, A&W Root Beer over there? Edgar Salas. You haven't been here in a while, bro. Certified T3Bot. Uh, what's going on? That's how California says, beep boop, detecting troll activity in the sector, beep boop. Uh, Nathaniel says, hey Jay, the beard is looking extra shaggy? It's kind of uh, rude to say that because I actually just came back from the barber. So it shouldn't look shaggy. It's actually, uh, it's been shaped today. So. Uh, David. Yeah, WV David hasn't been here in a while either. Uh, Punctured Long says, what? He wrote to me, when is the live stream? <laughs> Tom Mulrooney from Ireland. How's it going, buddy? What's going down? All right. Oh, new kid, new house. Yeah, man, that's adult stuff. That's a uh, true adulthood. Richard, Sean, Amaranto, hey bro, uh, <laughs> oh, it's the guy who almost bought the grimy boulder from the time teller on eBay, yeah guys, uh, a few uh, people notified me that there's someone on eBay going by the underscore time underscore teller, that is not me, uh, I don't do any selling on eBay, uh, so if you see the time teller on eBay, it's actually not me. Jordan Snyder says that beard have that beard style have a name? Uh Jewish. Um the moderators are trying to figure things out in the uh, in the uh, comment section. Um, so, okay, a, a couple people have written to me, and Taco is uh, has asked right now, uh, what do I think of the new uh, Longa? What is it called? The uh, Odysseus? Is that is that the name of it? We're gonna. Yeah, it's the Odysseus. So here's here's my biggest issue with this watch. Okay, as I said, I have no idea what's going on, brother. Is uh, the whole design seems very, very, very forced, um, and it is disappointing. Longa is known for very nice high-end pieces, really good designs, this and that, and it just ends up that. Uh, they may, they had, they just had, they just had, they just had, they just had to put a sports watch in their catalog. Why? Not every company needs to have a sports watch. Longa's not necessarily known for having sports watches. Now, I'm not going to knock them for trying something new. That's great. You want to release a sports watch? Take some time. Don't, Owen Walker, what's going on? Uh, don't force it. Uh... They're trying to ride out the wave of integrated bracelet hype, right? 
So this Odysseus, if you guys can see a picture of it, um, I don't think it act, it doesn't really have integrated bracelets. It just has a really wide bracelet that goes into the lugs. And uh, can you take off the bracelet and put something else on? Probably, and it'll probably take, it'll probably look a lot better. And yes, I know, I've read that, oh, they spent decades on this design and this and that. Well, how is it that they've spent decades on the design but it just so happens uh, that it looks exactly like what everyone else is releasing right now. Isn't that kind of interesting that apparently they spent a, over a decade on the Odysseus, yet they release it right when uh, all of these integrated bracelet Nautilus wannabes are coming out? 120 meter water resistance rating and it has a threaded crown. If you look at the crown guards, and I say crown guards because they're not really crown guards, uh, looks exactly like a Nautilus case. The only nice thing is that it has a okay dial and uh, the display case back is nice and it has a decorated rotor. That's like the only nice thing I can say about it. For $30,000, uh, I would get something else. And um, yeah. Dima says, hey, Jory, why is your web place called the Time Teller Shop and not the Time Teller Store? Because I like the word shop. I don't know. <laughs> but is it that big of a deal, guys? Jeremy says, Jeremy has a good perspective. He says, do you think if they released it with a rubber strap, you would feel differently? Yeah, probably. If they, if it came out with a nice silicone strap or something, I couldn't wear it because I get allergic reactions to those but I'd probably be more impressed with it than this really ugly ultra wide bracelet. Yeah, I should have spelt it in old English, Shapape. Cheers guys, trying out pumpkin cold brew. Car guy 427. Targa says, Excuse me. Target says, hello from Sydney, Australia. Love your channel, Jory. Great comedy too. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Got a lot of uh, people down under. Got a lot of down under viewers. Wolf Vintage Watches. What's going on? Uh, Anthony says, Joey. <laughs> uh, Joey, thoughts on the SNZG15? Let's take a look because that reference number... Let's have a look, shall we? Oh yeah, okay, so this is uh, essentially the upgraded SNK uh, 089, um, or sorry, 809, SNK 809. So uh, this has a 100 meter water resistance rating, whereas the SNK 809 uh, only has a 30, although I know people that swim in theirs and it's not an issue. Uh, but this one is rated at 100 meters and it's a great watch, so. Um, we have them at the Amazon store if you want to pick them up for a hundred bucks. It's a really versatile, really tough watch. So, uh, yeah, I would recommend thoughts on the JLC Polaris. I've worn them, uh, at their stores and they are dope. They are dope. They are dope. Big fan. Hey, George, just got here. Did I miss anything? Uh, we kind of just got here, too. Alex from Israel. Kol Tov. Manyanim. Jeremy Walker says, Seems like the SPBN 031s are, di are drying up. You think Seiko is playing on a relaunch of the tuna? Well, they kind of already have, right? So, um, they're making a big push with uh, these Spring Drive uh, Prospects LX series. Um, that's what they're pushing. That's what they're going to be pushing. And like I told you, these Prospects models that are going to be in the 1000 and just below that, that it's not going to exist from here on out. They're pushing Prospects into the high end market. So these, the, these spring drives Prospects going for around five grand. That's what we can expect from here on out. Dean is here. We started late specifically for Dean. If you guys didn't know. 
No, we started later today, guys, because unfortunately where my barber is at right now, uh, they don't open until 10. So by the time I finish, you know, it's 11. And then I have to get to where I'm going after that. So yeah, I wish that we could do the earlier starts like we used to. Maybe I can finagle it so that we can. But we're, we're working with what we got here today, guys. When the spring drive patents expire, do you think any other high-end brands will use them? Probably not. I doubt it. Sidewalk <laughs> shave stand. That'd be dope. Illuminati certified T3 bot and moderator. He's actually, I believe, our newest moderator. We're happy to have as many of you guys on the team as possible because, again, we're getting an increasing amount of... Uh, Jealous people, honestly, I think it is. And bored people. Guys, if you actually work hard towards something, it's very difficult to be bored because you're always busy. So these people pretty much have no life, no lives, and uh, they can't keep themselves busy without, you know, trying to be mean to another person. Um, is Seiko my favorite brand of watch? Very good question. Um, I've, I've mentioned it uh multiple times on this channel you must be a newer person Seiko's definitely uh, top top in my in my book Seiko and Rolex Steven Elias knows um, yeah uh, so Seiko and Rolex are both my um, favorite watch companies I kind of have a top five are you guys interested in learning my top five watch companies and James K is going to tell you that all the companies that I don't mention in my top five, I hate. <laughs> and that's not the case. Just because I don't mention a company in my top five, it, it doesn't mean that I hate those companies. So, uh, and I don't know if this is, um, I'm not sure if this is going to be in any order. It might subconsciously be in some order. Uh, Invicta's number six. Yeah, just it just didn't make the cut. Just didn't make it. Uh, smug face emoticon dude said something. What should we call him? Should we just call him face? Uh, okay, so here's my top five, in my opinion. Uh, we got Seiko and Rolex. Those are kind of Lenny face. Okay, dope. Um, very cool, by the way. Ooh, Taco has a guess. He says Seiko, Rolex, Hamilton, JLC, and Vacheron. Very close. V Ooh, very, you, only one wrong. Helgato. What's going on? Um, you only got one wrong in that list. Boom. Lenny crushed it. Chi-Town, California crushed it. Steven crushed it. Yep. You guys, you guys already know me too well. So my top five would be Seiko, Rolex, and... Uh, then we have to bump JLC, Vacheron, and Cartier. Had to add Cartier. People are so surprised when I lump Cartier in with some uh, advanced watchmakers. They, they, Cartier is one of the most orologically significant, uh, significant watchmakers ever. Orient didn't make the cut. Oris didn't make the cut. Guys... Just because it's not on my top five doesn't mean I don't love other companies, okay? Um, I'm wearing, ooh, I can't tell you what I'm wearing just yet. But I'm, I'm wearing something from a company that's not on my list. And I absolutely love Oris, and I own multiple Omegas. <laughs> All right, run the top 10. Let me, th let me think about the top 10. Owen Walker says, so you so confirmed, Jory hates Oris. Yeah. So, here's a rant. JG, uh, Speedmaster, Seamaster. There's so many iterations of both of those, but I'm just going to pick Speedmaster. Owen Walker, I know. I know you're joking. Here's a rant that has nothing to do with watches. So, um, I'm, I'm drinking Starbucks, okay, today. I am drinking Starbucks. This, you can see it's not black. Normally, I drink black coffee unless it's Vietnamese coffee. This is the first season that uh, I'm trying out their pumpkin cold brew. It's not a pumpkin latte. It's like, it's their pumpkin cream cold brew. 
Oh, sorry, guys. Okay, Sakari called me out. Sakari, certified C3 bot. Because you're a bot, uh, I'm gonna listen to you. Guys, may I rant about something? I have. I always have to ask permission. Am I? Can I rant right now about something that's, uh, well, anything? I always have to ask you guys permission. Am I allowed? Please respond. Cowboy Swami says no rant. Is Jory about to hate on <laughs> on Halloween? I would never hate on Halloween. Never ever, my pretties. <laughs> I love Halloween. I can't see you guys now, though. One second. Oh, now I can see you. Um, okay, so we're going to rant about something that has nothing to do with... Oh, where's Kevin? He's going to be making an appearance. Don't worry. Not right now, but but he will. Uh, leave the mask on. No, that gets... I feel in, in my first Halloween episode ever on this channel, um, I did a whole episode with that mask on. So... I actually did that and it was very, 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 very hot. Um, okay, here's a rant, guys. So I am drinking Starbucks today, which is uncharacteristic of my live streams, but it's not totally uncharacteristic for like my weekly life. Um, I typically get their cold brew, just black. Um, and I actually like it. Marex is sub George Orp. What's going on, Marek? Um, Marek just picked up a Longines that's like gorgeous, gorgeously textured dial gold uh with small seconds beautiful um and so okay this is the first season that i am uh trying out th their like pumpkin offerings okay so this is their pumpkin cream cold brew it's not a pumpkin spice latte although i've heard those are very good um this and i'm gonna be honest i've had these a few times now this month okay and what I've noticed is that it's very hit or miss, like incredibly hit or miss. Some people that make it, make it really good, really well, I should say, really good tasting. And some uh, make it not so good. All right. So what I really like about this is that it's, you get enough of the flavor, but it's not super sweet. Now, when they make it and it's incredibly sweet, it's bad. Or when they make it and you can't really taste anything, it's also bad. Um, gonna be totally real with you guys. I haven't been sipping on this that much, and it's because they didn't make it very well. And this is just proof that you should never ever deviate from anything you love. So never get out of your comfort zone. Never, you know, try something new. Just always do what you know and never try. Never try. And I'm just kidding. That's the wrong attitude tab. They just didn't make it very well today. Oh well. It's still coffee though, so I'll drink it. Andrew Hannum hasn't been here in a while. Certified see-through bot and moderator. Don Sinachi. Don Sinachi's here. You talking to me? You talking to Don Sinachi? Get out of here. Forget about it. Um, Kenny! Kenny in the building, he says, I have pumpkin spice deodorant and it drives my my wife crazy. Is that, is it good? Like crazy in a good way? Like she can't keep her hands off you or crazy like she's like, get the F out of the house. Um, I, I always make French press. Well, typically I do, I make my own coffee, right? Um, and dude, Starbucks gets a bad rap, but but the Starbucks cop the excuse me, Starbucks cappuccino blend, super dark, is very good when you make it at home. Very 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 good. So um, yeah. Jory's drinking a Starbucks cup. I just saw a betrayal. Yeah, I just ranted about Starbucks right now actually. Expect nothing, receive even less. Amen. Don Sinachi. Can't believe Don Sinachi. Aviv is here. What's going on? Marek is selling that Longines. Oh, 
Uh, let me see. My views on the Rolex Air King. The most current one, I don't like because you should just get an Explorer. They made it look very, it's like an ugly Explorer. Uh, the one I would get would be the Air King Date. A vintage Air King Date. That's what I would get in 34 millimeter. My favorite vintage timepiece under $500? Probably an Elgin Garfield that you can find right now at the Time Teller Shop serviced with a one-year warranty. Ooh, punctured lung. I didn't even look at that. What did they write? Oh, they got it right. I don't know if you can see it. They got it right. Goodman. And of course, guys, I, uh, I always give my last name uh, because when I say Jory, the weirdest things ever are written on the cup so i just i've learned whenever you leave your name for a reservation whenever you're leaving your name for an order always give your last name that's if you have a messed up name like me um <laughs> mr goodman that's my dad i'm just kidding my dad's dr goodman uh like garfield the cat mark thank you for uh making fun of my livelihood and my um thriving business I have a beautiful Elgin Garfield and uh, you're going to compare it to Garfield the cat who eats lasagna. It is funny actually because when I first saw the watch I was like, yo, that's a Garfield. Um, Andrew Hannum actually just posted a link of that. That is the most affordable watch on the site right now. Um, let me go to my own shop and do a shameless plug. Uh, why not? Ooh, we have we have two watches under five hundred dollars right now. Um, one of them is the Elgin Garfield. Beautiful. They call it a quilt pattern, a quilted dial. Um, ridiculous amounts of detail, especially when you consider it's a watch from the nineteen fifties. That's pretty crazy. Also, have one of the most interesting watches I've had at the shop right now, uh, and it's a Movado, believe it or not. But what's crazy is that it has Zenith logos all over the place. So um, it is a Movado, but the crown is signed Zenith, the dial is signed Zenith, the movement is signed Zenith, and the case is signed Zenith. Uh, so this is from that kind of snapshot in time when they still had a relationship uh, with Zenith. So, um, yeah, both of those are, are under 500 bucks. The Garfield is well under 500. Um, and the Zenith uh, Movado is two bucks less. It's 498. So if you guys are interested, let me know. We are at 100 people. Um, people want a wrist check. Let's do it. So Owen Walker said um, he thinks that I would have a Rolex on my wrist right now, and that is not the case. I Dan Sinachi. Um, I am wearing my Certina DS2 Chrono Olympic, one of my favorite chronographs ever. Look at that vicious crystal distortion, guys. That is just. That's borderline too much to handle. Look at that. That is absolutely ridiculous, guys. Very, very, very special watch because this is the watch that my dad got uh, when he graduated and it was passed on to me. So this is um, top, probably top three watch it, favorite watches in my collection because this was my dad's. So, reminds me of him and it's also, this watch also has a really cool story behind it because uh, way back when, Certina actually um, sponsored a Japanese expedition team and they wore these and climbed Mount Everest. How crazy is that? In like the 70s. It's just wild. So this watch climbed Mount Everest. So sure, we have the Rolex Explorer 2. Sure, we have, you know, the Boulder Expedition. We have the Alpinist. But this watch freaking... This watch like went to Everest. We got a super chat. JG 
with the super chat guys super chats are not expected they are not needed but they are much appreciated he says aspire to inspire before you expire push the likes to people that's actually an incredible saying that i've never heard before he says aspire to inspire before you expire amen to that brother amen this is an absolutely thick boy i don't have uh the measurements in my head but i've made like two episodes specifically on this watch um if you google uh the watch that climbed mount everest this this watch comes up it's one of my videos and i go over the specs but yeah powered by a value hand wind um, this is the no date variant, gorgeous watch. And, uh, you know, it's crazy, but before I was born, my dad even went diving with this watch and this does not have a threaded crown. This does not have, you know, threaded pushers. Uh, and it is, yeah. So it's been deep below water and it's been, uh, high up uh, and it, to altitude. Jory, which watch would you climb Mount Fuji with? Probably the Alpinist. I get it. Alpinist, right? Seems like a good pick. Or Geezer says, bonjour. Um, probably. That or one of the, uh, oh man, I don't have the reference numbers. One, one moment, one moment, one moment. I, if I were to climb Mount Fuji, it would be either an Alpinist or the uh, Prospex LX spring drive uh, with the orange hand and the compass bezel. Dude, I want that watch so bad, but it's, ugh. but it's like five grand and it is a whole lot of watch, but do I want to spend that money for that watch that I'm going to like beat up? I'm not that much of a baller yet, so probably not, but that, oof. man, that is such a sick watch. Sherry Carpenter hits the nail on the head and says, remembering people and events is what watches are all about. I agree with that. And that's why I actually prefer vintage watches. That's kind of, it's the sentimental, uh, cheesy stuff that, that um, appeals to me when it comes to watch collecting. And so that kind of aimed me towards vintage watch collecting. Um, Nomos gets a lot of love, man. So they're pro they'll probably do well even in the vintage market. Uh, Shy Town California certified T3 bot says, Jory, when, uh, when to you does a vintage sports Rolex become more of a dress watch? Well, it's it's already happening now. So the the date just and the date were sports watches. Those were sports watches that were for you know proper gentlemen to go play golf and tennis, uh, like. I would argue, though, that when you look at their current lineup, th those are probably the, the dressiest watches out of what they offer. When we're excluding the Cellini line, because Cellini is uh, hideous, and I don't think Rolex should um, waste their resources making those watches. Retro Weld is here. Haven't seen you in a while, bro. Where have you been? Um, I mean, obviously focusing on your channel, but I haven't seen you in my live streams in a little bit. Hope everything's good. It says, great sign. So what do you have to file under F it? You want to know the funniest part that about this sign is that my mom got it for me. How funny is that? Has like the worst swear word on it. And my mom's like, this will be funny. <laughs> My mom's probably watching right now, so everyone say hi. Hey, mom, love you. 
Shy Town California certified T3 bot says T3's mom is awesome. I agree. Fan Japan is chair music. I'm just going to call you Fan Japan. Says, uh, it doesn't matter if you like vintage or new watches, wear what you love. Amen. I agree. Lewis says, uh, certified T3 bot, excuse me, says, um, if Gillette pay you a million dollars, would you shave your beard? Absolutely not. Uh, I'm not interested in working with Gillette. Uh, Steven, certified T3 bot, says, Jory's just going to go ahead and pretend Cellini didn't happen. Yeah, I don't... Um, because let's be honest, guys, when, when someone says Rolex, does, like, honestly, there's 93 people here. When someone says Rolex, do any of you, like, think Cellini? Absolutely not. Michael Powell says, hello, Mrs. Goodman, it's raining in Chicago. Well, I doubt my dad's watching, but my dad's from Chicago, so Michael will pass that on over to my dad. <laughs> Owen Walker says, Jory, let's see the mom heart tattoo. Um, <laughs> I don't have any tattoos, actually. But if I were to get one, it would probably be a big heart that says mom. Illuminati certified T3 bot and moderator says, look at the likes. Uh, we're halfway there. Living on a prayer. Living on a prayer. Stephen Elias says, I think square dress watch. Exactly, yeah. When I think Rolex, I think square dress watch. No, no, no. Andrew Hannum, certified TV through and moderator, says, I don't like Rolex. Sorry. Nothing to be, nothing to apologize for. You can like whatever you like. But let's say I hated Rolex. Even when I think of Rolex, and I wouldn't think Cellini. Marek says, Jory, I've been toying with the idea of the new 36 millimeter date just smooth bezel, excuse me, smooth bezel jubilee blue dial. Here's my issue, Marek. Uh, the newer ones still wear bigger, I feel like, than the older 36 mil. Also, when it comes to date justs, I don't prefer the smooth bezel. I personally prefer fluted bezels. Now, with my all steel 34 millimeter date, that's obviously smooth bezel. I think that looks very vintage. But with some of these newer ones, I, do, I, I don't like the smooth bezel. But it, it's not my watch. It'll be your watch, Marek. So don't let me sway you. Um, but yeah. Um, Chi-Town California shares my sentiment and says, Fluted and Jubilee is the best combination. Smooth bezel with oyster bracelet. Exactly. So my uh, date is on an oyster. So I feel like that kind of works together. Smooth bezel, oyster bracelet, 34 mil, very vintage. I think fluted bezel and Jubilee is the way to go. Don Sinachi. Every time he comments, it's just Don Sinachi. Shebox says, Time Teller, hey T3, did I miss your bit about the Longa Odysseus? Um, you did, but don't worry, because I'm going to be probably commenting about that the entire live stream. Um, I don't like it, okay? And it's not that it's a bad watch. It's that I just, it's an ugly watch and the design feels forced. And the fact that they have the audacity to say, well, it took us 10 years. It took you 10 years and that's what you made? If it took you 10 years and you've been working on it a decade ago, then why does it look like exactly what is in right now? I just don't get it. They're trying to ride out the integrated bracelet hype train. Oh, well, it's not technically an integrated bracelet. Well, fine. It looks really wide, really disgusting. Um, it, whenever people show the wrist shots, and this is a big boy, this watch. Bracelet still works on it, and it's way thinner Th that bracelet on the odysseus boosh, incredibly wide uh and again the crown guards on the left side of the watch looks like an oversized nautilus and people complain to me okay people complain that i spend too much time uh complaining about the name of like watches 
let's just, for a moment, if Longa spent 10 years on this watch, and, and they're not at all trying to, to ride out the wave of, you know, the Nautilus hype train, are we just gonna, like, ignore the fact that they, they named their watch the Odysseus? <sighs> I don't know, man. That's, I don't know. Parallel thinking, perhaps. Anthony says, do you have a suggested watch repair shop in Los Angeles? Yes. Uh, the only watchmaker I use is TikTok watch repairs. So if you go to tiktokwatchrepairs.com and you tell them that you can say, hey, Jory, hey, Don Sinachi sent me. No, if you say, hey, Jory sent me or the time teller sent me, they'll know. And um, yeah, so I use TikTok watch repairs. Also, if you're not in Los Angeles, you can actually, a, a lot of their clientele comes from out of state. So, and they work on vintage watches they work on timexes rolexes they've stripped apart my uh they've, they they took apart, like totally apart my two-tone date put it back together did the same thing to my um breitling navitimer so yeah zach will can you ship watches to them yes you can Chewing on ice. What does Odysseus have to do with Royal Ochre overseas? I didn't say Royal Ochre overseas. I said Nautilus. The Odysseus and the Nautilus. Um, did I see your Instagram comment? I didn't. On which uh, picture did you write it? I'm going to my uh, own Instagram. Let me see. Was it on my most recent? Let me see. Oh, I just saw. Okay, long comment. One second. Uh, that fellow there. This is this is dedicated to that fellow there. He says, "Not sure if I'll make the live stream today." <laughs> well, you're here. Wanted to tell you that I watched yesterday's rant. Uh, and the idea of DWJ popped in my head. Just like the fake watches and homages coming from China or whatever else, do you think there might be a dark web jewelry somewhere on the internet? Perhaps a version where each of your vids were reproduced in shoddy production and with a guy in a jewelry homage costume. Um, like, are we talking like parallel universe? Laszlo, what's going on? The only jewelry homage out there right now is Ben Clymer. Next question. That fellow there says the ride from this morning. Christopher says, T3, how many inches is your wrist? I'm a big man with eight inch wrist. And I try to gauge what watches look like in your wrist before I make a decision. So I have just above a seven and a half inch wrist. And every picture on my website is uh, taken with my wrist. So that should give you guys kind of a gauge. Um, people ask me all the time, well, will this fit my wrist? Will this fit my wrist? Well, if it fits my seven and a half inch wrist, then it'll probably fit yours as well. Uh, Milcom or one of my moderators, please throw up a link to the shop. Uh, one, act one watch actually sold this morning, but there are still three available uh, we did a restock, restock, excuse me, last night. Milcom, thank you so much. Milcom Moderator has a link. Uh, we have two watches up that are under 500 bucks. Uh, and then we have a very rare King Seiko um, that's probably going to take a little while to sell. But um, because it's above $1,000, but it's so rare that that, that is an, an, a fair price for that watch. Uh, but yeah, two watches under 500. Tell me which one... Um, you guys are interested in Kenny Van Cleef certified T3 bot and my uncle says you don't have a wrist model on your payroll Kenny I'm working on it 
Uh, no, I do, all jokes aside, um, I think it's most beneficial for me to uh, be the one taking the pictures on my wrist because people see my wrist more most often. So I doubt that I've sold a watch to anyone that like hasn't seen my YouTube channel yet. I'd be interested to know though, if anyone has just come across my site organically and been like, oh cool, I'll buy this. I think the majority of people that purchase my watches already know who I am. With that being said, I think it's beneficial to have the pictures on my wrist so that there's continuity throughout the catalog, but also so, you know, people know seven and a half inches and that. I could count the hairs on your wrist. Um, good luck. Good luck trying, man. There's a lot, there's a lot of them. James K, certified T3 by M Moderator says, uh, what a question. Who is Jory? Man, that is deep. That is deep. Man. Car Excuse me. Car guy. Chewing on ice over here. Um, by the way, can I rant real quick? I'm gonna rant. What the heck is up with these stupid tops? I'm trying to drink my coffee and like chunks of ice just fly into my throat. Like what the heck is up with this? Every time I sip, I got ice. Man. Yeah, they're supposed to save plastic by using somehow more plastic. Travis says, I will volunteer to be a wrist model. I appreciate that. When we scale upwards, you'll be the first one I call. Uh, Dima says, this is a weird thing. On used watch sale posts on forums, it seems like people don't want to see the watches worn on a wrist. All right, well, there's pictures of the watches not on a wrist. <laughs> uh, Car Guy 427 says, Jory, are we getting an end of 2019 best of T3 compilation? Uh, you're going to have to talk to my editors. That would be hilarious. I didn't even consider that, but um, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's add that to the list. Uh, have we had to deal with the paper straw junk in California? Yes, we have, and it is terrible. I hate paper straws. They make the drinks taste bad, they get soggy, and they stick to your lips. It is, uh, I don't like it. Milk of the Moderator says, uh, if you need a 6.75 inch wrist, send those watches my way. I have cameras too. Amen. Let's do it. Owen Walker says, why are people so weird? That's, uh, I don't think we'll ever figure that one out. Um, James K. Certified Teeth and Moderator says, uh, any idea why the increase in troll activity? Illuminati, me too. I have a seven and a half inch wrist as well. Um, probably. So people don't like, uh, can I rant? Can I rant again, guys? Am I allowed to rant? Um, th this is, this is going to get may maybe a little deeper than it, it needs to be. Um, and I don't stay up at night thinking about this but but this is what this is what i think it is and you guys can uh <laughs> illuminati says t3 suffering from success um you guys can tell me if i'm kind of on the mark or not uh here's why i think there's an increase in troll activity people don't like trying new things people don't like getting out of their comfort zone so when they see someone else trying something and doing something a little risky, uh, doing something maybe people perceive as difficult, uh, those people, they feel threatened in a way. 
These are the same people that think that success is scarce. Success is not a scarce commodity. Okay, there's enough, and, and this isn't even too woo-woo or out there. There's enough success for all of us. It's just a matter of figuring it out and, work, and, and trying hard. Um, so people don't typically like to try because when you try, there is a risk of failing. I failed more than I have succeeded, guys. Everyone typically does. Okay, so not to take a too serious tone on this little sub rant, but when you try, you extend yourself and you put yourself out there and things become a little bit more vulnerable. And again, when you try hard, there is potential for failure. However, if you try hard enough, failure is irrelevant because you're just going to keep moving past any bump in the road. Okay, so I think the reason I'm getting a ton of vile comments and stuff um, is because when you, I'm trying something new here. Okay, so people already push back when I make videos. Um, people push started to push back when I started doing live streams regularly. So now that I'm starting a store, oh my god, the, the audacity that this man wants to uh, scale his business and try something new. Um, they don't like that. So when I make posts on the community tab on, on YouTube, and I say, hey, there's been a restock, I get the most vile comments and, and people writing the most vulgar things under a picture of a freaking watch. Um, and it's because they, they, they feel threatened and, and they look at this and, they, and, and they're at the innermost part of their being, they think, wow, this is uncomfortable. Uh, this guy's trying something I would never try. Uh, I'm going to rationalize it in my own way and say what he's doing is wrong. And then I'm going to lash out because I'm weak and I'm scared and I'm vulnerable. So him being successful uh, makes me feel uncomfortable. And the funniest part, uh, this dude's probably watching right now because these, they, these guys are obsessed with me. Um, I got in succession like four vile comments under the last picture I posted of a watch. And um, I think it's probably from the same account because they're like boom, boom, boom. Um, but uh, obviously I just banned them. Boom, ban hammer. Um, and so then the next comment under that was from another separate account. I was like, wow, you're erasing comments. And so I just banned them again. It's like, okay, cool. You're going to keep doing that, whatever. I'm, uh, I'm just going to focus on doing what I, <laughs> what I need to do. Vince, in the building. Now we can have a proper live stream now that Vince is here. Uh, it says, thought I'd check in real quick and say hi. He's at work. What's going on, brother? James K, certified teeth robot and moderator says, I'm so psyched Jory answered my question. You're awesome, Jory. Well, thank you. And then he called me Archie Goodman. Thank you. Sheepbox says, WTF, I'm a new sub and I like your show. T3, keep it up. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, not everybody shares the same opinion as you. A lot of people hate me um, because I, I dare to have my own opinion. Fast Gerbil says, random question, are you into boxer engines? I noticed the 911 in the back and I think you own a Subaru. Yeah, exactly. I, I have an STI. I love boxer engines. It's one of the best designs for an engine when you want torque and that rumble. Hell yeah. Love them. WB David says, no having your own opinion. That's not allowed. Optimus Milkum. Zach Well says, uh, I don't know why people care if you sell watches. Um, be, because of what I just said. So, I don't know why we can't all see, uh, I don't see, I don't, I don't understand why we can't all, um, why can't we all just get along? No, what I'm saying is, like, we can all find common ground 
just based on the fact that we all enjoy watches, right? So if we all shared the same opinions on watches, there would be no point in anybody talking about watches because we'd all literally think the same way. Um, but the reason people don't like that I sell watches is because it is something that they themselves probably want to do. And so they don't think I deserve to be successful at it because they're like, whoa, 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 this guy's gonna, this guy's gonna try to make a business and live a life by selling watches. I like watches. No, 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 no. He can't do that. Okay, dude, you can do it too. A, t a ton of people are in the vintage watch business. The, the, like, when I first made that episode, August 1st, we launched the shop, okay? August 1st of this year. I was very excited about it. Um, I got a bunch of people writing to me. They're like, oh my God, what about so-and-so? What about your competition? What about this person, so-and-so? Guys, we're not competing with each other because like the more watch stores that open up, the better it is for all of us because that means the more options people have and the more people will be interested in watches. Dude, Federico. One of my buddies, right? He he has Delray watches. I want him to crush it. I want him to do very well because if he can bring more people into the vintage watch world, that means more people will be paying attention to me. So, th like, this is, like, dude, that I want that. There's no competition here. So, if that person that's, like, upset with me selling watches just tries hard and starts his own shop, God bless him, man. I hope you, I hope you crush it, too. Because ultimately, you're going to be bringing all of us business. So, boom. Auto mods, roll out. Fabio, Napoleone. Oh, man. We got Don Sinatra and Fabio Napoleone. Hey, don't make me call my boy Fabio. Fabio Napoleone. He'll come in here with the baseball bat. With his brother, Don Sinachi. All these characters. You guys have amazing names. Shytown, California. Certified T3 bot says Jory's Dream Ride. 1993 Porsche 964 RS America in Guards Red. Amen. Someday I will have that. If more people buy my watches. <laughs> How dare you buy a watch. Sell a watch. Milk and the moderator says, Jory's like the only watch guy on YouTube who doesn't take it so serious. Because I almost said it's not worth taking it seriously. I take the channel very seriously. Like, I want to produce the best content for you guys. And I want to, like, dude, this live stream, this Saturday live stream, I take it very seriously because I love it. I'm very passionate about, like, hanging out with you guys. Um... But, like, the subscriber count, the amount of views, the amount of likes, this and that, that's not worth getting upset over or even really thinking about. Because if I'm doing my job and I'm interacting with the people that I love, that's all I care about, man. Mark Wayne, almost, he's related to Bruce Wayne, and I know that because he has the Batman uh, mask on his avatar. He says, love your channel, keep up the good work. Thank you, man. Tippy Kafu says, stop. Owen Walker says, guys, you don't want to owe money to. If there's two people in life you don't want to owe money to, it's Don Sinachi and Fabio Napoleone. <laughs> you talking to me? The name is Fabio. Fabio Napoleone, you talking to me? Don Sinachi. Tudo bem, né? Beat you with the lead pipe. Hello. I'm Jody and welcome to Just One More Watch. What does Steve Carell say in the office when he's trying to do the Italian impression? He's a gabagool. 
Oh man, The Office is getting taken off of Netflix. <laughs> what will I do with all the time that I don't have? I don't have time to watch it, but... Kenny Van Cleve s sounds tough, but it doesn't sound like Na Napoleon. You don't exactly... Van Cleve doesn't necessarily come off as Italian. Prison Mike. They made us eat gruel sandwiches. They made us eat our own hair. The worst part of prison was the Dementors. <laughs> I have the gabagoo. The best part about the prison Mike skit is uh when Pam is like, Prison Mike, what did you what did you go to prison for? He was like, stealing and and killing and I never got caught neither. And then Jim's like, Well then why are you why are you in prison, Prison Mike? <laughs> I never got caught neither. You're talking to me all wrong. You're talking to my guy all wrong. Do it again, and I'll stab you in the face with a soldering iron. It's Joe Dirt, right? Uh, no, well, that's a dude. I'm gonna give myself credit. That's a pretty good Christopher Walken impression. Uh, Jory, do you like vintage Tudor, <laughs> Tudor oysters? No, I don't. Man, I want one of those coffees every time you drink it. It's good. Jarius, or Harius, however you pronounce it. I'm probably butchering your name, but you have a very cool name. Says, I bought my wife a Cartier tank solo, small quartz watch. Someone said it's not a real tank. What the F does that mean? Um, I don't know. Are they saying it's counterfeit, or are they saying because it's quartz, it's not real? Because the vast majority of tanks are quartz. Yeah, it's a great woman's watch, Marek says. People are just upset. Snobs. Andrew Hannum, certified T3 bot and moderator, says, best office character is Creed. Creed is good. In the Halloween episode when he shows up covered in blood, and he's like, oh, today's Halloween. It's perfect. <laughs> WV David, have a good one, man. Reading comments, reading comments. Third year old boomer says, so we got Jody, David Beckham, Jory, and the mobsters all in this prison. Pretty interesting. Man, that would be a pretty intense scene, huh? Nobody steals from Creed Branton. The last guy to do it, his name, Creed Branton. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. Rare says, how about Orient Mako? How about it? It's a good watch. I don't own one, but it's a fine watch. Overpriced, ro oops, overpriced Rolex or, or bankruptcy? <laughs> Which Rolex are we talking about? <laughs> Uh, Noel says, what are your thoughts on 30 to 34 millimeter watches on big men? Uh, I wear them all the time, literally all the time. Uh, I'm a big dude, about six foot, 225 pounds. I have a seven and a half inch wrist and I wear like a 32 millimeter bubble back all the time. I, I, I see literally no issue with it whatsoever, but People are uncomfortable because nowadays the, the, the 
common thing is is bigger is better when it comes to watches and i think that's kind of stupid watch zell is here what's going on man long time no see you haven't been joining us we didn't even shun you and you still haven't joined us we might have to shun you just for not joining us Andrew Hannum, certified T3 bot and moderator, says, Jory needs to experience Orient watches. It's not that I've never seen one or held one or worn one. I just don't own one. You know, technically I own a Movado right now. Isn't that kind of crazy? I do technically own a Movado. The Zenith 17J. Uh, Tippy says, Movado, Daltron. Um, one of my moderators, I have a ton of moderators here, very, very blessed today. Uh, put, um, put a link to the Movado up here so people can see it. But yeah, it's actually a really cool one. When I saw it go up, I was like, hmm, buy it. Do you poly wash your own acrylic crystals or just make Gato do it? No, I uh, I, I have the watchmakers do it. Gato doesn't, yeah, he edits the watches too. <laughs> um, Milcom, the moderator, has a link to the Zenith Made Movado 17J. Really cool watch. It's ridiculous that it says Movado, but... Literally above that is the Zenith logo. The crown has the Zenith logo. The case is signed Zenith and the movement is signed Zenith. Uh, ridiculous. Like snapshot of orological history right there. Mazel Tov on the newborn uh, incoming watch zealot. And uh, say goodbye to your watch collection. I'm just kidding. How's my SSC 091? I have a SSC 081, uh, and it's right as rain. I love that watch, and I wear it all the time. Absolutely love that watch. <laughs> Dima says, modern Movado is, is Movadon't. I agree with you. But there was a time, and I made an episode about it, there was a time that Movado was very, very cool. And the watch I have at the, sh at the shop is from that era, like right before Movado changed hands and uh, went downhill, unfortunately. But, you know, we can always reminisce on when Movado had really cool watches. One second. So I got a lot of questions about uh, the Explorer and the the eleven forty two seventy. So who asked the question? Who who asked the question? Let me see. The eleven forty two seventy isn't the one that I would get personally. First of all, we're talking about the, the 39 millimeter. Um, everybody wants to know the, the price on this watch. So what's interesting is about a year ago, like this time last year, the Explorer 2 16570 was the watch to get. Okay, I anticipated that and jumped on one. What happened? The price skyrocketed. Okay, um, now the 39 millimeter Explorer is the one to get uh, the 114270. Everybody wants one now and the prices are reflecting that. The prices have jumped up well above $5,000. You used to be, be able to get them for like 45, 46. Now it's like 56, which is a huge bummer. Um, yeah, don't like that. The watch wears too big, by the way. Oh, the 11, sorry, I'm thinking of the two, I'm thinking of uh, the 214-270, I think, right? 214-270? Yeah. 
right? But everybody wants an Explorer 1. Uh, yeah, 214, 270. My bad. Um, so I would get the, I would, so I boggled it up in my head. Let me re, let me restate this. The 1114, 270 is the one I would get in 36 millimeter. The 214, uh, 270, right, is the 39, which I would not get. It wears too big. Uh, but the prices on Explorers are, are jumping. And so I wouldn't get one right now. But when I say that's the one to get, I mean like that's the flavor of the week right now. Uh, Shytown California certified T3 bot says, Jory, you got, uh, you got on it at the right time with the Explorer 2, the last affordable steel sports watch, Rolex sports watch, yeah. Um, watch it all says, Explorer 1 is a grail for me. Car guy 427 do you know of any green and red watches? I'm trying to find a Christmas style watch, even though it's 60 days, what? Vostok Amphibia. Right, get a Vostok with a big green dial and a big red star on it. Ooh, James K, certified T3 bot and moderator says, I present to the watch zealot a get out of shun free card. <laughs> Noelle says, is there good patina and bad patina on watches? What do you like on vintage? Uh, that's very subjective, my friend. That is very, very, very subjective. Um, what looks beautiful to me could be ugly destruction for someone else. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. I um, If you see something you like, get it. But I can't tell you what good patina is and what bad patina is. I mean, okay. I think some companies play a little loose when they're like, oh, perfectly patinated dial and the dial, like you can't read it. Uh, but then there's watches like my Vacheron or my Grand Seiko J14070 that have like speckled fading, speckled patina. Um, and I think that's gorgeous. And I think that's commonly regarded as being acceptable, whatever that means. But when the whole dial is just like gone or there's like huge water blotches uh, that I am not into. And then, you know, water damage is, is for the most part, pretty unappealing to me when there's big blotches of, in, in schmear. Milk and the moderator have a good one, brother. Everyone give... Give my moderators an applause, but also Milcom because he he did a good job today. Rob, George, do you think Rolex will do anything significant in 2021 for the 50th anniversary of the Explorer 2? Ah. Uh. Hold on. <laughs> if I don't think this is going to happen, would Rolex do a redesign? of a black dial Explorer 2 to make it look like the older, the original Explorer 2, the McQueen Rolex. Would they do that? Because some argue that the current iteration of the black dial is a modern take on the McQueen Rolex. I don't know. But if they're going to celebrate it, you'd think that they would hearken back to that one. I would argue that the Black Dial Ex Explorer 2 right now is like a modern take on the McQueen Rolex. 
But I don't think Rolex would do that because Rolex isn't super interested in like reissues. Jose Munez says, yeah, they're going to raise prices. That's what they're going to do to celebrate. Cowboy Swami, how are IWC aviation watches? I love the onion crowns. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of what everyone compares every pilot's watch to, right? The IWC pilot's watches, aviation instruments, um... I have friends that are obsessed with the big pilots. I would probably get the, the uh, Spitfire. That's the one I like. Ah, uh, yes, 30-year-old boomer. Rolex is going to, on uh, Basel World 2020, Rolex is going to come out with the very, very sought-after Rolex wait list not going to be any different than the current Rolex waitlist. It's just going to be longer and more expensive. James K, certified T3R and moderator says, awesome Elgin Garfield. Surprisingly still available and he has a link. That watch is crazy cool, guys. Hey. Come here. Come here. <laughs> so this is Princess Seiko. <laughs> She's purring very loudly, but I don't know if you guys can hear it. <laughs> it's Jory's doggo. <laughs> She's not a dog, but she eats a lot like a dog. She's kind of built like a mew, where she's like really chubby in the lower part and then like a tail. Yeah. <laughs> Princess Seiko. So, <laughs> wow, that's a cool name. Yeah. And her birthday is November. What? She's very talkative. What, Seiko? You want to be on camera again? Okay, she's bothering me because she says, I want to say hi. You purring? Look at this chubby girl. Look at this chubby girl. <laughs> what is it, Seiko? What? She will be two years old November 4th. Do I think they will ever size down the Explorer 1? Like go back down to 36 millimeter? I doubt it, unless they release a, a female version at 36 mil, which is which would be the one I'd buy. But I don't think they'd ever do that. Three hundred sixty millimeters, exactly. Yep, it's going to be a, a new deep sea watch. <laughs> Joe Robertson says, "Nice cat name." Seiko rolls off the tongue better than Valju seventy seven fifty. <laughs> Come here, Valju. Valju seventy seven fifty. Valju twenty two based Vacheron. Valju twenty two. Valju twenty two based Vacheron. Come here. Valju 22 based Vacheron for 4178. Vacheron 22 based Vacheron 4178. Come here. 
crazy. Just call your cats by Rolex reference numbers. 1016. Thirty-six millimeter watch for guys. Uh, that Movado is thirty-six millimeter, and it's a watch for guys. So I do have a thirty-six millimeter watch at the shop right now, and it's it's a Zenith made Movado. I haven't uh, seen one in person yet. I'm gonna have to. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go tell Mark to send me a. Uh, a watch to review and I'll give it I'll put it through its paces new longest sports watch not a fan bracelet too thick crown guards ugly $31,000 120 meter water resistance rating it's a joke uh, what's on my wrist today Sartina DS2 Crown Olympic. This thing is gorgeous. James K, certified T3 bot and moderator. It says, King Seiko Dia Shock at the T3 shop pay. We're like the vitamin shop, but uh, we sell watches. Look at something. Oh, right there. Uh, guys, what's your favorite watch at the, uh, is the, is the Certina available at the Time Teller shop? Absolutely not. That's, um, that's, it's a watch that was passed down to me from my dad. So I'm definitely, I'm not selling it, but thanks for the interest. We're all desk divers, guys. What favorite watch? Yeah, I said, what's your favorite watch at the shop right now? There's actually only three available, so. Fast Dribble, you gotta impulse buy. That's the whole point. We're trying to get you to impulse buy. Don't think, just purchase. I'm just kidding. <laughs> James K likes the Elgin. Yeah, the uh, Zenith Movado is... is pretty ridiculous and it's very interesting or logically speaking it's it's a crazy watch look at the beard do what it says buy a watch Be funny if the Elgin sold on Monday. I think, um, so I knew that Wittenauer, um, would sell immediately because for some reason, every time I've had a Wittenauer on the site, it is sold within hours, uh, like within boom. And sure enough, I posted the Wittenauer, um, today I noticed that it was sold. So, um, yeah, I knew that went now. It's just too unique, too clean. Uh, it was like, it's pristine. So I knew that would sell very, very quickly. Um, the Elgin is at such a good price. I'm surprised it hasn't sold yet, but I know that uh, the like gentleman sizing and the quilted dial, it's not for everyone. I think it's a gorgeous watch. Uh, the King Seiko Dia Shock, I think... If there are, I think when the hardcore Seiko fan sees that, I think it's gonna sell. 
um, but it is above, it's just above $1,000, so I can see it chilling at the shop for a little while. Um, the Zenith Movado, I think that's too unique not to sell quickly, so I think that it's probably going to, I think that, I think the Movado is probably going to go next, if I'm totally honest. Zin on the T3 site, uh, no vintage Zin uh, for the Time Teller shop right now. But yeah, I think the next watch to go is probably going to be the Zenith Movado. Um, it's just too unique and it's too easily wearable. And at 36 millimeter, I think that it's, it's uh, kind of a no brainer. I stared at Jory's beard ones in my beard group. <laughs> Fast Dribble likes the King Seiko. Um, Skari says, I'd love to pick up that King Seiko, but 39, 40 millimeters is the smallest. I'd like to wear anything smaller. It looks weird on me and I don't wear it. Uh, good luck finding literally any King Seiko that size. You literally won't because they never made a watch that size, but... Uh, Zenith Movado. Also, I don't think I've had any watches that size at my shop. So, um, yeah. Zenith Movado still available at the T3 Bazaar. It's a bazaar. Uh, and he has a link. Check out the Zenith Movado, guys. I think that's probably the next one that's going to sell. Um, and I know this just based upon like what prices people tend to click on most. And I think that that's a very unique, easily worn watch. Um, so yeah, I, I have a feeling it's probably the next one to sell. Anthony says, are you trying to keep the shop at an affordable range or is it just coincidence? Um, no, I, I, these prices aren't, uh, random. So I'm definitely trying, like my mission is to cater to the sub 1000 market. So, uh, Again, I need to cover the cost of keeping the store running, right? Watchmaker, uh, the website, different insurances and stuff. So um, we need like, there needs to be some money coming back to the store. But when it comes to the product you're getting, I'm trying to keep the prices as low as possible. I think that's obvious. Uh, Steven says, all that beard oil gets expensive. Yeah, guys, all the money is just going straight to me in my beard oil addiction. <laughs> Uncle Reed, what's going on, brother? Zach says, that King Seiko is super nice. I don't think the price is bad for a timeless dress watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, that specific watch, good luck finding. I mean, one in that condition serviced with a one-year warranty, it doesn't exist below two grand. By the way, most of those King Seikos are overseas. Uh, most of them you'll find in Japan. This is probably one one of very few that is stateside. I don't have actual numbers to tell you guys, but I have a feeling this is one of very few that is stateside. Reading comments. I didn't just black out. I'm reading comments. Andrew Hannum says, Badger brush and saving soap with a good twist to open or a three-piece for life. <laughs> James K, certified T3 and moderator says, buy the Elgin during the live stream and Jory will give you a shout out. 
That's true, actually. If I do get a, a an order during the live stream, I'm obviously going to shout whoever buys whatever out. Um, also, this isn't really a selling point, but any everybody that buys a watch from my store gets a handwritten letter from me. Not that that matters, but so that's kind of, that's kind of similar to a shout out, right? Except it's probably a little bit more special because I'm actually sitting down and writing you guys a note, so. Noelle, what do you think will be the hottest watch in year 2050? Uh, Owen Walker says, classy, sure does matter. Amen, well thank you. Car guy, do I think Timex is going in a good direction with a new wave of mechanical watches? So Timex is doing something very deliberate right now. Um, so Timex understands that once they released the Marlin, a bunch of watch enthusiasts came out of the woodwork and started paying attention to Timex. So what did they do? They're not stupid. And they were like, hmm. What happens if we do another reissue of, of an old cult icon? So they did that and boom, more people from out of the woodwork, like hardcore enthusiasts, started paying attention and doing write-ups and reviews of Timex. So Timex is releasing more and more, like their new diver green dial concept and, and all these things that they're coming out. Um, I think Timex is being very smart with what they're doing. They're releasing watches that have more appeal to not just the random dude at Target, but to the guy that's actually into watches. Um, and they're not dumb. They know that those people that are really into watches are going to take pictures of them. They're going to go on YouTube and talk about them. The talking heads on YouTube, like me, are going to make videos about them. Uh, so... Yeah, I think Timex is going in a good direction. Again, the only downside to what's going on with them is scalpers. Jonathan Hernandez says, he'll write you a note with his Mont Blanc. <laughs> it's true, I do, and you know that, I do. James K. Certified T3Bot says, everyone that buys a watch from Jory gets a handwritten letter from Jory. <laughs> Andrew Hannum has almost a point. He says Shinola is worse than MVMT and Daniel Wellington. I kind of agree with you. I really have disdain for I really have disdain for Shinola James K certified T3 and moderator says do you like the watch print featured on Jory's wall get your very own at the T3 Emporium right now we sell everything from watches to hot tubs just kidding we don't have any hot tubs guys James K it's confirmed James K is on the payroll Thirty-eight millimeter Rolex would be great if you tried on the thirty-nine millimeter Yachtmaster. Um, Forty millimeter is fine, guys. Forty Forty millimeter Rolexes are fine, just not with the current case design. Terrible. Um. Right, so we're talking about the smaller, the, the smaller yacht master that they catered towards women, perhaps. Uh, yeah. Do you have life insurance? Go to the T three exchange. To... <laughs> All your vintage timepieces needs at the T three haberdashery. 
We sell snake oil too. Beard oil, snake oil. Same thing. It'll help you grow a beard. If you don't have a beard, you put it on. You don't want a beard, it'll take your beard off. Tussaud is good. Vintage Tussaud. Current Tussaud, there's not a whole lot I like. But vintage Tussaud, I like. Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with mesothelioma? You may be entitled to compensation at the Time Teller Shop. Paid for by... I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Right? That's what they always say at the end. I am a non-attorney spokesperson. A fine selection of tonics and elixirs. Um... Jory, quick question. What strap for my newly acquired 007? I personally like it on... Hmm. I have an old GI single piece. People call it a Zulu or a NATO. Um, I really like it on that. They look good on, on a multitude of straps, honestly. Or you can get a... a Super Oyster, although they're not legally allowed to say Super Oyster anymore, so. Uh, I think it's called the Super O. So yeah, that's what I would do. Either put it on a Super O bracelet or like a really old school single piece uh, NATO or Zulu. Dima, yes, I'm working uh, right now on um, some some of those products for you. Blue Sharknado, people say. Angus Jubilee. Uh, what is the thickness of the, let me see. Jose Muna says, Jory, what's the thickness of the Zenith made Movado? It is right around 10 millimeters, I believe. I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it's right around 10 millimeters. Again, these 17 joule hand wind movements, very, very thin. Um, so yeah, 36 mil takes a, takes up a good deal of real estate on your wrist, to be honest. Um, hyper legible dial. Again, two incredibly prolific names. Zenith, which is one of the most important companies, or logically speaking, and then Movado, who used to be incredibly prolific, and then in the mid-80s, they changed hands and the company got destroyed. But, yeah, it's, it's crazy to see a Movado with the Zenith logo everywhere. And, oh, I actually didn't mention it on the site. I'm going to have to get that updated uh, that watch comes with the factory strap and signed Zenith buckle. Has the signed Zenith buckle, which you can see a picture of, but I didn't, uh, I noticed that it didn't say that on the website, so I'm gonna have to update that. I can do it while I'm on a live stream. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my PowerPoint. James K, certified T3 bot says, like the two, two watch dynasties came together and had a baby and made this jewel. 17 jewels. Little dune buggy. Jory, what are those red gem thingies at the back of my watch's movement? The jewels. What are those, those jewels in the back of my watch movement? Are they the jewels? Yo, if someone buys that Movado, I'm shouting you out right now. If someone buys that right now, I'm shouting you out. If you buy the Elgin, I won't. But if you buy the Movado, I will. I'm just kidding. If you buy any of those, I will shout you out. How do you say... Dude, you know what's so funny? People now do it as a joke in my comment section. But, uh, oh man, people complain about how I pronounce things, which is hilarious to me. But I love when they're like, you pronounce to so wrong. It's pronounced to so, but they type it the same way. So it's like, wait, 
in their head, they're differentiating the way it sounds, but like to everyone else reading it, you've just written the same word twice. <laughs> Glass hut. It's glasuta. Man, so funny. When I showed you guys my Vacheron, people are like, oh, he's saying Vacheron wrong. Okay, well, I'll call it whatever I want because I own one. <laughs> Back to work. I gotta fix that listing. What, what, which one, James, which one was the, oh, the Movado. I gotta update it. You pronounce Seiko wrong. It's Seiko. Yeah, it's just like that. Most important question of all, who is the hand model in the Time Teller Shop photos? You're looking at him. The name's Fabio. Fabio Napoli, what was it? Napoliano. The name's Fabio Napoliano. with factory zenith signed buckle and strap i just updated the listing guys bada bing bada boom bada bing bada boom fabio napoliano just did a deal with my website thanks to don sinachi jager lay coolt man i'm making a uh i actually filmed an episode. I don't want to g give too much away because you're going to see it uh, this coming week. But I filmed an episode talking about this and how funny it is um, when I get corrected about this stuff. But yeah, Andrew Hannum, have fun with your life. Enjoy your life. Do something fun today. Just make sure that you uh, pay your respects to Mr. Fabio Napoleano. Any update on that white gold president? Jonathan, if more of you buy my watches, I will have a white gold 36 millimeter president in no time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Because all the money I make goes right back into the store. But whatever, that's business. Hey, Siku. James K, you're putting in work today, man. Faster roll, that's fun. Ride fast, don't die. Um, yes, you will. It says uh, Seeger Yo Janssen. I'm so I'm so sorry about your name. Uh, will we ever get to see the watchmaker that goes over all the watches at the time tile shop? You will. Um, and we actually just spoke because I just had a meeting with him. And uh, you, there's 101 people here. I'm gonna let you guys know first. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna post something where I want you guys to write down questions and we're gonna do a little Q&A episode with him so we can you can ask him his opinion on different things and all of the technical aspects that I don't know about. So, uh, yeah, that'd be fun. I didn't apologize for someone having a name I apologize for butchering his name because it's Brian Fjorn Seeger Jonsson. And I feel I have sympathy because I have a name that people butcher 24 seven. And the ironic thing is that my name is listed. It's typed out literally at the beginning, literally at the beginning of every episode. So yeah. That's why in my personal life, I just go by Goodman. How does
does one butcher the time teller exactly? <laughs> he can teach us how to print. No, because people. <laughs> oh, man. Johnny Goodman. Wouldn't it be funny if I get my, my watchmaker here and we do an episode for a Q&A and the only thing people ask him is how to pronounce things? <laughs> Oh man, I hope that actually happens. I'm gonna write all those questions and be like, hey man, so um, how do you pronounce Oris? Oris? Okay. Um, cool. How do you pronounce Rolex? Oh, Rolex. <laughs> Here's a hard one. Uh, how about Gerard Perigo? Or is it Perigu? Perigu? What about that one, smarty pants? Oh, you trained for a, a long time? You're Swiss trained? You can literally take apart a watch and put it back together? Interesting. Well, what about this? How do you pronounce Vacheron Constantine? Oh. Vacheron Con Constantin? Mm. Whatever. <laughs> I own one. He's like, I'm not going to work on any of your watches anymore. <laughs> James K, certified T3 bot, says, still available despite our best efforts at the T3 Airport Hair Care and Tire Center. James, you know what's funny, dude? Is that Hamilton sold. And we didn't even have to yell about it on a live stream. It, it sold. Stop drinking your coffee so fast. <laughs> yeah, 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 Paul. What's the difference between a manual and an auto wine mainspring? Whatever. How do you pronounce Carl F. Bucher? Constantin. So funny, because when I. So. No one ever cared. How I pronounce things till I put on the mask. No, um, no one cares how I pronounce like Seiko or Aichi 2 or Fuyugashiki. No one cares about that. If I say, well, am I supposed to be like a caricature of a Japanese person? Because if I did that, then I would also be in hot water. But for some reason, okay, I own a Vacheron Constantine. I talk about that in an episode, so then people, I've mentioned Vacheron in a million year, million episodes, but I talk about the one I own, ooh, that's a bridge too far. So then everyone's like, oh my god, I'm cringing, he's mispronouncing it. <laughs> okay, what if I was to speak the way I speak now, and I'm like, hey, what's going on everybody, I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller, I'm going to talk to you about my Vacheron Constantin. Those people wouldn't be satisfied either because they'd be like, oh my god, he thinks he's such an intellectual. Wow, you think you're better than us? Oh, you buy a Vacheron and then you're going to pronounce it all like fancy? What, you think you're better than me? You're a loser. I live with my mom. That's what it would, that's what would happen. Dude, we're going to do a Q&A with my watchmaker and I'm just going to roast him. There's going to be like four people that jump into the live stream. And they're going to be like, hey, um, just wondering, what's a flyback chronograph? And I'm going to be like, <laughs> um, yeah. How do you pronounce a little company called Je la Coudre? What about that? Hmm? What about Je la Coudre? Hmm? Someone's going to be like, hey, um, does a tourbillon actually matter in your experience? I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you pronounce Hamilton? Oh, Ham Hamilton, okay. Yuri Goodsman. Do a video on Panerai. You better talk Italian with a Swiss accent. I'm actually going to speak Romanche the whole time. And I already did make an episode on my Panerai, but I'll make another one and I will speak Romanche.
Brayden said that made my day. How do you pronounce Carl F. Booker? Baba Yaga. It's the Baba Yaga. Uh, Sakari with the super chat says, do multicolored bezels have any use or aesthetics? I think people argue that it helps differentiate, like, okay. Short answer is no, not really in my opinion, no. It's aesthetics. But some people would argue that it, it does and whatever. I'm gonna say there's no use. Travis says your live streams are so entertaining. Thank you. Guys, people will find anything to complain about. It's like not surprising to me at this point, but yeah. JLC there, mystery solved, exactly. Yeah, William, the Sky Dweller is incredible. The amount of, of engineering that went into that watch, very, 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 very cool. I'm almost done with my coffee, guys. It's 106 minutes on the live stream. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad, boy. Yeah, people are going to be talking about the gyro tourbillon, and I'm going to be like, <laughs> How do you pronounce a little company called Creator? F.P. Jorn, ever heard of it? It's going to be like, yeah, I worked on one. I'm like, oh, oh yeah? Well, how do you pronounce it? Bitch. We need to get Jory on someone's podcast. Bro, I would get kicked off of that stream so fast. It would not even be funny. They're going to be like, wow, cool. Okay, uh, we're going to take a huge leap of faith and risk everything uh, and invite Jory onto our podcast. I'm going to be like, what's up, guys? I'm going to start yelling. They're going to be like, okay, cut his mic. We're going to take a little break, guys. Why do people wash his stuff? Jory going all Jesse Pinkman on it. Do I sleep wearing a watch? Uh, I don't sleep. But when I do, I'm not wearing a watch. Greg Estrada. What's going on, man? Car guy says, do you cringe when you're wearing a, a Hamilton khaki and someone says, hey, nice Rolex? That's never happened to me. Um, I don't think I would care if someone said that. I don't know what I'd do, because I probably wouldn't be like, oh, actually, it's not a Rolex, it's a Hamilton khaki, and uh, really interesting. Uh, the company used to be American, but now I'd probably just be like, thanks. Unless they were like someone that watches my stuff. I'd be like, oh, cool. You want you want to talk watches or no? Okay, cool. But I'm not going to like be like, hold on, wait, it's not a Rolex. Tippy, what watch style do you like the most? Retro, futuristic, or classic art deco or something else? Um, finding myself falling in love with art deco watches more and more. Art deco is very, very cool, very unique. Something about art deco watches, it's like borderline over the top with how funky they get. But they're so interesting and unique that it's like, wow. It, it, it's weird and tasteful all at the same time. And that's what I love about Art Deco watches. Check out the Elgin. Please someone buy the Elgin at the time teller shop. But guys, here we go, down the hatch. That's right. All right guys, we just, did 109 minutes on the live stream. Dima says, bye, Jor. Um, okay, so what do I always tell you? Number one, 
gotta get out of your comfort zone. I'm not even kidding because you see the trolls now, they're coming out of the woodwork because I'm trying something new and I'm getting out of my comfort zone. That's part of it. That's part of getting out of the comfort zone. So, um, Steven says something, something comfort zone. Whatever, Steven. Uh, but seriously, you do gotta get out of your comfort zone because that's like, you can't stay where you're at. You gotta keep going onwards and upwards, says Fabio Napoleano. But I'm serious, okay? Um, don't worry about the trolls. They're just attacking some, they're honestly attacking themselves because they feel weak and insecure and um, they don't know what it's like to get uncomfortable. Um, they have that feeling, but then they just keep retracting. So we gotta go onwards and upwards. I'm taking you guys along with me. We are just under 80,000 subscribers, guys. Huge round of applause to you guys. You guys rock. Huge round of applause to my moderators uh, working overtime today. And last week too, man. Um, but seriously, uh, do something that scares you a little bit. Do something difficult each and every day. That's number one. Rule number one, get out of your comfort zone. Number two, tell someone you love them. Shouldn't have to go a moment without telling someone you love them. Uh, you know, oftentimes if you're in a bad mood, if you're down, um, if, if you're not feeling the greatest, sometimes just telling someone else that you love them makes you feel better. So try it. Seriously, I'm going to start it off. I love you guys, each and every one of you. You guys rock for getting me. Dude, 80,000, we are almost there, and uh, I'm gunning for 100. So let's do it, guys. Check out the Time Teller Shop. Uh, three watches available. Restock last night. One got scooped up. Don't miss out. Um, two of them under $500. Check them out. I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You freaking rock. Dab.